What's up, everyone? I'm Joe Pompliano, and this is The Joe Pomp Show. Today, I want to talk about the business behind Topgolf. Now, chances are many of you know what Topgolf is, and you've probably even been to one of their venues. The company was founded in 2000, and they completely changed what a golf driving range looks like, turning them into entertainment venues where you can play technology-enabled golf games with family and friends while enjoying food and drinks. And the concept worked. They have over 80 locations in nine different countries today, and they went from doing $630 million in revenue in 2017 to $1.5 billion in revenue last year. And Topgolf's business is only getting stronger. In 2021, the company was acquired by Callaway at a $2 billion valuation. They opened 13 new venues last year alone, and they plan to open up more than 100 new venues by the end of this decade. But the easiest way to explain Topgolf's business is by breaking it down into two parts. First, the venues. And second, the technology. So let's start with the venues. The majority of Topgolf's revenue comes from its venues. Again, they have 80 venues in nine different countries. They're opening up 10 to 15 new venues every single year, and they plan to open up 100 or more by the end of this decade. Most of these venues are large venues. We'll call it 75% or more of Topgolf's venues. Those venues have 100 or more bays at the venue, and they cost 30 to $40 million to build. They generate between 20 to $28 million in annual revenue, targeting a cash-on-cash cash return of 50 to 60% and an estimated payback period of just two and a half years. Now, these economics tend to be so strong for Topgolf because they make the majority of their money off events, food, and beverage, not traditional gameplay like a normal driving range. For example, in 2019, 34% of Topgolf's U.S. revenue came from events, 33% came from food and beverage, 29% came from gameplay, and 4% came from other things like merchandise. But this commitment to growth has taken a toll on the company's finances. For example, Topgolf generated just $3 million of profit in Q1 2023, mainly because they have $1.2 billion in venue financing liabilities as they try to build 10 to 15 new facilities every single year. But this brings me to the second part of their business, the technology. It's small, but it's certainly growing. For example, in addition to their portfolio of 80 plus venues and $1.5 billion in annual revenue, Topgolf is also the owner, operator, and they license out their top tracer range technology. Now, this is the same technology that you see on TV during all the major golf tournaments, showcasing the flight path, distance, and ball speed of every shot during more than 275 national TV broadcasts each year. But the interesting part is that Topgolf also licenses this technology to individual driving ranges, with 750 different driving ranges in 31 countries using it today encompassing 22,000 different bays that use the technology. And the financials are fascinating too. There's no install fee for driving ranges. They bring it and they install it for free. Topgolf then charges $160 per bay per month or $2,000 annually. And they're active in 22,000 bays worldwide, generating $44 million in annual revenue. And while this may just represent a small part of the business today, about 3% of annual revenue, Topgolf believes it can eventually be a $200 million per year business. That's because they installed 1,500 Top Tracer bays in Q1 2023 alone, and they expect to install another 7,000 bays by the end of this year. But that brings me to my next point. Topgolf is obviously an incredibly impressive business. They went from $0 in annual revenue to $1.5 billion in annual revenue over the last two decades. They have nearly 10,000 employees and 65,000 people visit their venues every single day throughout the year. But Callaway's story as a whole doesn't excite investors nearly as much. If you were to look at their stock and zoom out, it's essentially flat over the last 25 years even with the boom that we've seen in golf over the last three to four years. But this is where Topgolf can help. Callaway has already spent nearly $750 million on other acquisitions, yet Topgolf already accounts for nearly 40% of the company's overall annual revenue already. The company is now also putting Topgolf logos on Callaway-sponsored athletes like world number one John Rahm, and they also sell Callaway clubs at all Topgolf locations. So by acquiring Topgolf and introducing it into its portfolio of products, Callaway has the opportunity to not only expand the total addressable market of golf players in general, but make them Callaway customers from day one. Now it's time to see if they can execute.